Hey guys, this is Deepak Srivastav. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I will show you how you can extend and enhance SharePoint document sets functionality using Power Apps. And before we move forward, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon. So as we know, the SharePoint document set allow us to create those individual winders that can have uh, specific properties that we can define in the SharePoint columns. And you can upload and associate multiple documents under that document set or the winder. Very useful functionality and I hope you have used it in, in previous version of SharePoint and maybe using it right now. So in today's video, I'm gonna take the simple use case uh, where I want to create a project Okay, and in that project, I like to associate multiple documents. And also, I want to track individual tasks under each project. So what I did, I created this document set library called projects, as you can see here. And I have these different projects that I that I have created as in document sets. If I drill down to any of this project, I can see all the documents that I associated or uploaded for this project. Then I have another list that I'm calling the task list or work progress tracker. In this list, I am tracking the individual task. And if you look at here, the project, it's a lookup column that is looking up to my project document set library. So whenever I'm gonna create a new task, I'm gonna select under which project this task is belongs to. Perfect, right? Everything is good. Uh, functionally, this is working exactly how I want. But if I click on the, uh, the document set, what it's doing is taking me to all the documents. It's not giving me the view that I want my users to have. And the view that I'm talking is, I want a page for this document set, like we used to have in previous SharePoint. If you remember this screen, this is the document sets welcome page. So in, in SharePoint 2013, we used to have this welcome page where on the top, you can have all the document sets property or the column information that you're defining. Underneath that, you can have all the documents. But in modern SharePoint, we don't have that feature yet. Okay, so what I did, if you look at this column here, it's calling project details. If I click on any of these button, it's going to open a Power App form that has all the information about this document sets, all the columns that we have created, like title, status, priority, start date, end date. It is showing me all the documents associated with this particular project or document set. And it is also showing me all the tasks. If I go to the separate different one, now the screen has changed. Now it is showing me document for this particular project and all the tasks for this project. Similarly, I can keep going and it will change. So this is what I was talking about, that we're gonna actually extend the functionality of the document set using Power App and create a view like this. Okay, so before we start, uh, what we need, we need a document set library, how you can create one. Go ahead and create a document library, like I did this one, and then go to the library settings. And the only thing you need to do, uh, go to advanced settings, make sure that you enable allow management of content type. And after that, go ahead and add a document set content type. Okay, once you do that, your document library is ready to go and you should be seeing your document set content type here. Okay, so this is the document set library that I already set it up. I have applied uh, document set content type to it. So now how I can change the behavior as I was showing in my app. So when you click here or if you click on the new, you should be going to the screen where you can see all the details. So for that, under Power Apps, click on the Customize Forms. And once you do that, you will end up to the Power Apps Studio and it will have one form screen, okay? First thing that you need to understand, if the customizations or the changes that you are doing require a lot of space, then what you need to do, you need to go to the file, go to the settings, display, and change the orientation form portrait to landscape. So this app 
is connected to your document sets library that you created okay it has a screen called form screen and it has one form this form is nothing but the form control okay and if you look at the data source it is already connected to your documents document set library the first thing that you need to do you need to make this form look a little different so what i'm going to do i'm going to click on edit fields and i'm going to add more fields that i want this form to be displayed okay so let me click on add fields and then i can select what all fields i want on this form okay click add so this is going to add all the fields that i have selected in the next i'm going to change the column and make it two column structure then the next thing that i want i want this description field to extend to the full width so for that i need to select card or data card for the description go to the advanced click on the small unlock icon and once you do that and now you can actually extend this to the full width if you are getting this error that i am getting go ahead click on the formula bar and if you look at there there is a, some problem in the description then i'm going to click dot and search for the description that i have okay so our form is ready and one more change i would do i would go to the property and change the layout from vertical to horizontal now to show the documents associated with this document set what i'm going to do i'm going to insert a gallery and insert a flexible height gallery okay not the normal vertical gallery the flexible height gallery here i'm going to position it where i want this to be layout i'm going to select the news feed okay and then i'm going to make some ui changes like for example this image i want to be this size and i want to move it to the left and the data source for this gallery is going to be the same data source of our document set library okay and then i'm gonna just make some changes here so what this label i want to show is the name of the file and the second one i want to show who modified the file okay and the image this item dot thumbnail dot small i'm also going to ins drop another icon here that will help me to open this document into the new window now if you notice right now this gallery is showing me everything documents all the documents and all the document sets what we need though we need just the document belongs to this particular document sets correct so how you can filter this document set library i'm going to select all these different control that i have into this gallery go to the visible property of this it's right now true okay so this is the formula that we are going to use to filter this library and filtering only the document those are belongs to the current item okay the formula is very simple what we are saying if this item dot folder path folder path is is the path where you uploaded this particular file so what we are saying if this item dot folder path is equal to sharepoint integration now what is this thing if you look in the left hand side there is a sharepoint integration object here and what this does it gives you the current item context that user has selected in the sharepoint so when i select a particular item the sharepoint integration is going to give me all information about that particular item okay so we are saying the sharepoint integration dot selected whatever item is selected dot full path now full path is going to be the entire path of that document set or item that you selected and then we are just adding one backslash so we are saying if this item dot folder path is equal to this and it's not a folder okay so this way the only files those are belongs to the current document set or those are created under that given document set is going to be visible rest file are going to be hidden let me quickly save this and publish to sharepoint now if i go to the project demo document set library and if i go to the property you can see your form is now changed and not only it's, it has changed it is giving me all the information about this document set plus it is showing me the document that belongs to this particular document set if i go to the second one 
it has changed now it is showing me other documents if i click on the new as you can see it's giving me the option to create the new document set but this time it is still showing me some documents i don't want that so when i when user is creating a new document set i don't want to show them the document because the document doesn't really exist at that point of time so for that go back to your power app in this gallery visible property we are going to use another simple formula sharepoint form one that's the name of the form dot mode equal to new if the form is new form then we're going to hide this document library else we're going to keep it visible okay let's do some ui changes here so what i'm going to do i'm going to drop another rectangle icon here just to add as an header okay and i'm going to change the color of this okay so i added this rectangle i give a name called documents and also added this small icon so we can say this is our documents on this form here on the top i'm again going to drop another rectangle here okay and i'm going to make it left align and i'm using this rectangle to show the status of this current project and based on the status i'm going to set some color for this rectangle and the formula is very simple what i'm saying if currently selected item status that's my project status is the column not started on hold completed in progress and what should be the color based on the status okay now what about the task list that i was showing so if i go back to my sharepoint you remember i have this separate list where i'm tracking the individual task and then the project library that i created is a lookup right and i also want to show here all the individual tasks associated with this particular document set okay so very similarly what i'm going to do i'm going to drop a gallery here now the data source for this gallery should be my work progress tracker list so what you need to do you need to go to the data here and create a new data source search for sharepoint add a connection search for your sharepoint list you can have one or many sharepoint list that you wanted to show here in my case i have only one and then i'm going to change the data source to work progress tracker list and now you can see here i have my all the tasks in that work progress tracker list displaying here okay so let me make some changes i don't want the image here so i'm going to say title and subtitle okay and similarly how i'm doing this rectangle for the form what i'm going to do i'm going to use the same logic for these individual task okay and the logic behind it is very is very similar if you go to the color what i'm saying if this item dot current status and based on that i'm changing the color so this part is done now we need to filter this gallery right because we don't want to show every item it's very simple so go to the items filter that's the function that we are going to use so the column that i have this is a lookup column right so project demo that's the name of my lookup column dot value okay so whatever call lookup column that you are using that column name dot value equals to sharepoint integration dot selected dot title okay so that's the formula that you need to use to filter this gallery to only the item or only the task those are associated with this given document set or given project okay okay so now let's publish this to sharepoint and see what happens i'll go to my project demo document set library if i go and open the property you can see right so i can see all the detail about my document set or the project i can see the associated document there are two document and i can also see all the tasks associated with this particular project if i go to another one listing has changed now i'm seeing some other documents some other task so let's go to the app again select the icon and on click of this on select i'm going to use another function called launch and what i'm launching this item dot link to item launch target dot new okay so that's the the function that we are going to use and what this function is going to do is going to launch this url or the document url to a new window and then on click of this icon similarly we are going to use the launch function so launch okay 
So now this way you can open the document or you can open the, okay. So I'm going to publish this again and let's go back. Now if I'm going to open, okay. So now you see here, uh, if I click on this icon, it's going to open the document here. And if I click on any of these items, it's going to take me to that SharePoint list item that I just click. Now, if you remember my app, I had this small button. So I don't want user to go click here and then go to the property. What I want them, I want them to have a quick, easy access to open this information. So this is pretty straightforward, simple approach. Go to your list, create a text column, simple text column. Okay, I, I already created it's calling project detail at that. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the column setting and format this column. And then we are going to advanced mode. I'm going to paste the JSON that I'm using. Now, if you are familiar with formatting the column, then this is very straightforward, simple JSON. And if you are not, uh, I'm going to make this JSON available in the GitHub and you can download by a link in the description click preview and you can see the button click save cancel so now you have a button here that you can click and it will open the details so that's it for today i hope this will help you creating some enhanced document set library in sharepoint thanks for watching and thanks for subscribing keep watching keep learning thank you